We are talking about ditching your ego. Uh, I learned this the real hard way, folks. The ego is one of the biggest reasons why you fail. Um, it has to be, bar none, one of the biggest reasons. Um, it's an enemy that keeps you in touch, out of touch, sorry, with, with reality, right? Um, it prevents you from hearing critical feedback, but it's necessary for you to hear this feedback. Uh, your ego gets in the way. Um, and, the, and the number one thing I see in entrepreneurs and now remote entrepreneurs is you overestimate your own abilities and your worth and you underestimate the effort it takes or it's going to take and the skills required to get to where you want to be. Um, it's a huge flaw that um, you need to get in check ASAP. Um, there's a book I read by Ryan Holiday called um, Ego is the Enemy. I definitely recommend that book. Um, and and, and you, you'll just see it. Like if you're creating unrealistic expectations for yourself um, and you've got like a sense of entitlement that it's going to work because I am this, that's your ego talking. Um, and when you finally decide that you make decisions on what's best for your company, what's best for your company and not your ego, um, that's the test. That is when you will see tremendous growth um, across pretty much everything, uh, including your life, um, to be honest with you. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you guys a story of how an ego situation absolutely destroyed me, um, knocked me down pretty hard, and then I'm gonna talk about where I learned from that lesson and made $10 million off of one transaction. So um, one of my businesses uh, we were doing, I owned uh, business centers for the travel space uh, in the Dominican Republic. And you know we installed all this infrastructure and, and Wi-Fi and all that stuff for the for the hotels, and we were charging tourists for the money. And guys, I was living life. I was I was 27 years old. I'd never made this much money in my life. Um, it was great. You know, my my perseverance and my personality and 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 business acumen got me into these hotels and understanding the shift. But then what started to happen is these hotels started to offer these other services, and you know I didn't care. I, I really didn't care. I was like, hey man, I'm, you know, I'm Donald Trump. This is, uh, this is absolutely amazing. Um, we'll figure it out. They're not going to do that. Blah, 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 blah. Ego mistake number one. Second mistake I made. Uh, the, the managers of the hotels and the directors and the brands of the hotels would call me uh, to take meetings you know, to negotiate the terms of the contract and the renewals. And you know, they would ask me to work with them and try to um, try to get them to um, come to new terms with, you know, being able to offer Wi-Fi for free. I mean, this is now, you know, 10, 10 years ago plus. Um, and I, I kind of refused. I said, you know what, you're not going to find a vendor that's going to do that for you in this kind of a close of a time. Guys, long story short, not only did I get booted out of every hotel eventually, probably took max a year, I was broke. I was, I was literally, I think I had maybe $20,000 to my name at that point. Uh, and I, you know, went into severe depression. How could this happen to me? But it was my own fault, man. It was my own fault. If I didn't innovate, if I didn't continue to have these conversations and negotiate and, 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 and stay the course, you know, life probably would have been a little bit different. But guess what? You live and you learn. That's what I did. And now I'm going to give you a second story of how I was faced with an ego situation 
And at the end of the day, uh, it worked out massive. So, so um, one of the companies I had got acquired uh, for, for small beans uh, by a US company, they brought me on board to do some, some, some work. Uh, and then they completely reneged on their terms. Um, it went south really fast. To add insult to injury, um, I was hired by this uh, company and I'll never forget, I was in Las Vegas with some friends enjoying some good time. And um, before I was married, by the way, for those folks that keep in tabs on my, on my life. Um, but, but before I left, uh, I got an email saying, you're fired, you're not, you're not contributing. Sorry, it's been great. Uh, we're gonna try to unwind our deal. My whole life went into this thing. Um, and, and at that point, that was my life. And, and so the reason why I was fired was because the, uh, the, the owner said that I couldn't close large software accounts, software development accounts, because uh, I'm not highly technical. I'm not. I have a little bit of a technical background. I understand the ins and outs, but I'm not highly technical. And so, you know, my opinion was, you know, various things, the, the kind of leads the teams were generating, the, the position that I was being put in on some of these. Anyways, it didn't matter. I was out. Well, <laughs> I was sitting on the throne. <laughs> Sorry to get so detailed. And randomly, I got a phone call from uh, a number that I recognized because it was a deal I was trying to close. And I picked it up. And, you know, you can imagine I'm, I'm literally just picking this call up in the middle of doing my business. And the guy says, hello, my name is so-and-so. You remember that proposal you gave us? Uh, yeah, we're going to move ahead with it. And, uh, you know, uh, let's sign the paperwork. Well... <laughs> If this guy would have emailed me, he would have known that I don't work at the company anymore. If he would have called the company, he would have known that I'm not working at the company anymore. So at the end of the day, what happened was I said, sure, let me, uh, let me get back to you in just a few minutes. And so what happened was I called the owner, who was the CEO as well, and I said, hey, that deal you said I couldn't close, uh, among other things, they just called me, they want to close and, you know, can I participate, um, in, you know, the commissions and stuff that I was supposed to get in this deal. And you know what he said to me? He said, that's great. Are you willing to work together again? Now in that moment, you guys, you got to realize I don't trust this guy. I want to tell him everything I could, uh, that was bad. And, and my ego from experience said, hey, make it work, make it work. Figure out a way to make it work because you lose more than he does if you put your ego in the way. So what did I do? I said, sure, I would absolutely work with you again. But this time, you know, on the contract, I, I made it a little bit uh, different and negotiated some terms uh, to, to put in there. Well, guys, fast forward three years later, I helped build that company to 70 million in revenue in three and a half years as a service company. My own book of business among doing other things was $35 million a year. And the guy who was told cannot sell software had the largest book of business that he had ever seen in his life. Well, they sold the company. Uh, at that point, uh, I became a, a shareholder in the company. Uh, and among other things, that one transaction uh, on that sale netted me $10 million. And I was living in Canada at the time, so that was US. And, um, you know, you think about that, there was like a 25% exchange rate there. You know, it's about 13 million uh, Canadian. And then I had it structured a bunch of different ways uh, through corporations. So I was able to take advantage of some tax structure planning and stuff like that, which I'll recommend and talk about as well. Anyhow, that is my point here. And that's just one example I have of where an ego really gets in the way 
Um, you got to ditch the ego, guys. You got to ditch the ego. If you're operating with an ego, you're operating towards failure. Just know that. You might get some successes here and there, but you will not grow. So uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.